beautiful. Look how they did the beginning, the front of it. Wow. This is the reception area with Quabana. We're live in the 233 period. Here's this is reception. basically where Kwame Nkrumah stood to declare independence in Ghana here. So mm -hmm. they actually stood here to declare independence. So this is a statue made of bronze of Kwame Nkrumah here. This is Kwame Nkrumah's third, third burial place. It's third? Yeah, third, yeah. When you come and look over there, you can see that that's the wife, Fatia. Ah, uh, yeah, Fatia. So Fatia was also buried beside the house. We are not African because we were born in Africa. We are African because Africa was born in us. Welcome back, Gems. It's your girl, Miss Audi, aka Body Intellectual, aka y'all already know the rest. Join me as we travel to and through the African continent as we learn more about the languages, the culture, and why so many African Americans are deciding to repatriate back to. If that is of interest to you, then you need to keep watching. Hey y'all, I'm in my Uber on my way to the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Museum. This is my first time, you know, seeing it since it reopened. So that's really, really, really exciting. So I'm gonna record that for y'all so we can look at it together. I'm meeting Kwabana there. Y'all know Kwabana, that's my business partner for tours with Shameless Plug. If you are coming to Ghana at any point throughout the year, you can book us for your tours. In Ghana, we plan everything for you. We don't cover your flight, we don't cover your visa costs, but we cover your, like the price that we charge you, we'll cover your accommodation, some of your foods and your entry to tour sites and a number of other things, but pretty much we'll plan everything for you so you don't have to worry about it and you can focus on enjoying your family and your friends when you visit. We like to throw in a service component if you would like to service with some students here. But anyway, yeah, so I'm meeting up with Kwabana. We're gonna go check this out and like tour it for ourselves before we tour it for you all and get some content for our tour page. So that's what we're doing today. We're we'll probably gonna get some food. And then later, I'm supposed to be meeting up with my friend who happens to be here in Ghana as well. We actually met up yesterday and it was so, so cool, but we're gonna meet up again today. And we're gonna go out tonight, fun, fun. Y'all get to see a different side of Mighty Intellectual. Cause I don't think I did any like night out videos in my extended stay content. And it's honestly because I didn't really go out that much, but I'm gonna try to go out a bit and actually record i'll record on my phone because i think that's going to be the most sensible thing to do instead of bringing like my gopro and my camera so yeah that's where we headed y'all let me know if you like my hair i had my braids in i was trying to get the curly look so i kept the braids in for a while and i took them out and so my braids are curly i'm really feeling this look the sun is shining today the sun is shining let me show y'all my view Within the last three years, I've been here at least four or five times. 
that's insane <laughs> that's insane within the last three years but honestly i'm hoping that especially with my new job and everything because it really costs nothing for me to like come that i can make it a regular thing stay for maybe a couple weeks at a time depending on how things work out so stay tuned y'all god is always working god is always shifting in my life shifting my mindset shifting my heart and creating opportunities out of no opportunities so yeah anyway i'll see y'all when i get there and yeah it's a little vloggy vlog so we out in traffic y'all we out in traffic he said that we're close to mccullough market which i believe because it's looking very marketish over here let me tell y'all something too now when you book in these trips to ghana with Braffier tours you make sure the same place that you go it doesn't have to be this way but this is just how i did it. the same place that you go for your yellow fever vaccination which you have to get once in a lifetime they can be anywhere from 300 to 400 dollars depending on where you stay mine was like 300 and i know it could be a strain financially but that's why it's important that like you're planning in advance for this trip especially if you have like a huge family a bunch of kids because each, each of them have to get the vaccine. You only need it once. So after you get that it that first time, you're good to go. But make sure you bring your malaria pills. So ask them for malaria pills for your trip as well. You can get malaria pills once you get here, but I think it's cheaper to just get them at the same place that you get, especially if you're using your insurance or whatever the case is. You do not want to be caught with malaria. I've been here enough times where I just forget to get my malaria pills. So typically I'll just get them once I come. I'll just get like a week's worth and go from there. And I've pretty much been fine. I haven't had any health like mishaps here in Ghana except my extended stay. I was here for three months. I did get it was something with my stomach. It was like a bacteria. It wasn't malaria though. And it was from like eating all that street food and stuff like that. So that's another thing to consider. Like yes, you can eat street food, but just be very, very cautious if it looks like you know it might not be super clean or whatever the case just go to the regular restaurants with you know the regular built like the building and everything that has the local dishes because our little american bodies can't take some of the same things that people who are born here in ghana can you know their immune systems can take so just keep that in mind your girl learn but we out in traffic y'all let me not wrap y'all up too much i don't want to make this vlog super long because i have a whole day of activities i think for these vlogs i might do like part one part two that type of thing just so it's not super long we got out the traffic was so bad so i'm about to just go across the street like now how many years was uh, has it been well it was only that was 2021 yeah. i think they closed it like right after yeah. i saw it yeah. so oh he's on a horse 
Here's his Instagram, y'all. Go give him a follow. How do you get in? Is it this way? Yeah. What are you making? I'm making a bracelet. What's your name? Kwame. Kwame. Okay. I know, it's just I already have like a couple of these that I got out here. Sorry. Okay, okay, on the way out. The glasses. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Kwabana, y'all, remember Kwabana? And I just met another Kwabana, he does tours. <laughs> he gave me his card if you want to check it out. Maybe that in the future we could do something together, but we just started, so we're just figuring things out. Look at that. <laughs> I was at um, Shy Hills with uh, one, one guy from France. From where? Phoenix? No, from France. From France, okay. Yeah. We went to Shy Hills. Today. Okay. That could be cool. Yeah, we, can we can do something together. I was telling him we were planning our December tour. Yeah. So we're just trying to get more people to sign up for that. So we're going to be working on some of that stuff while I'm here. I'll but yeah. Yay, Kwabana. It was nice meeting you. Yeah, have a nice time. What's your name? Niadi. 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 You can say bye to the subscribers. Right. Bye. <laughs> For now. <laughs> no, yo, yo, yo. Let me tell you though something. I mean, if you want the best in Ghana, I mean, subscribe to her page. Yes. yes. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe too. All right. That was cool. Reception area with Kwabana. We're live in the 233 period. Oh, that felt good. Wow. This side. This side. Okay. One after the other. Please go. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's so. This is so different. I need a picture here. You can sign Okay, this is so beautiful. Y'all, this is so beautiful what they've done. This is so, it's like so much more space. And I love this position. They have it so well. Okay, y'all, so we are in the Kwame Nkrumah National Memorial Museum. I told y'all before that I came here in 2021 before they did the renovation. But shortly after I came here, they closed it down for like a few years. And this is like the final product. So there are a bunch of school groups out here. It's super exciting. I see a bunch of people who are visiting with their dashiki. Super exciting. But for those of you who don't know, Kwame Nkrumah is the first president of Ghana. He's the first president of Ghana and he believes in pan-Africanism, which means that we all come together, we buy from each other. One Africa, not like separate African countries with these separate different languages, etc. etc. So anyway, hopefully we get to interview one of the tour guys so they can tell us more details. They probably know a little bit more than I do <laughs> about the history of Kwame Nkrumah, but just know he's the first president of Ghana. He's really important to the foundation and starting of the country. So let's go explore. I 
think that's really cool. It's just like a safe space for the children like during school. I love that. like in there. I'm about to take some pictures really quick y'all. We are not African because we were born in Africa. We are African because Africa was born in us. <laughs> Which is why, like, one of the reasons I'm here. Ooh, okay. And what do you have to do, Paul? I'm already taking my tour guide lectures. You know? I'll be going for my interview very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, you have any tips for him? That'll be cool. <laughs> what kind of tips? I don't know, for like, like being a tour guide. We're you both need The patience to understand the people that will come to your, your location. Mm -hmm. People have all different kinds of movies and attitudes. So mm -hmm. It's just understanding the patient that will help you mm -hmm. build yourself up as well as the people, the visitors who come around. So. And not taking it personally, right? Okay, awesome. This is my favorite <laughs> one. So what is this, the so significance this of this session? Basically, where Kwame Nkrumah stood to declare independence in Ghana here. So mm -hmm. he actually stood here to declare independence. So this is a statue made of bronze of Kwame Nkrumah here. He gave his speech, right? Or something? Yeah, yeah, it he was gave here? His yes. Oh, okay. But the video is inside, which inside. Can, you can't take. Yeah, video right. In there. Okay, so, so they gotta come. They just they, gotta they, come they, to they, see. Yeah, you have to be here. You have to be here. Okay, awesome. What about, I was asking him, so I wanna know about the horns and then also this. I know his gravestone is there, but like, what is the actual structure? Is there a meaning? Yeah, there is a meaning. Oh, okay, so, so let's what's. Then, let's then. Okay. Should we go there? Yeah, we can go there. So, We're talking about this one, y'all. So the structure there happens to you know a tree a tree a tree yeah so uh, every base of a tree the base of a tree always happens to be broad mm -hmm. and so as you climb up to the branches it happens to grow smaller and smaller mm -hmm. so it happens to be to describe the unfinished work of farming kuma because it's it is cash is cash short mm -hmm. so you see the top the top there is cash short it's Happy gonna be up to you to finish his work. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try and do it. I'll try and do it. So wow. it actually demonstrates the unfinished work of Kwame Nkrumah. That's why wow. it has been cut that way. Yeah. Wow, I love it. Thank you. I was one, I was just asking Kwabana about that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's that was me. Then someone asked to why is there water around the cemetery where he was buried. So the reason is we believe there is always life after death, right? Mm. And you have a saying that water is life. Mm -hmm. So the water around the place means that Kwame Kuma is not dead. He's still mm. we believe that he's not dead, he's alive with us, that his legacy still lives on, his legacy is still with us, that we want not to build and build on what we have done. And we know we'll definitely get it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there as a niche. At some point, right? Yeah. <laughs> At some yeah, point. So do you think, the question like I was trying to ask before is like, so you talk about the work is unfinished, right? Are there any leaders you feel like who have helped kind of build the tree a bit more? Like any leaders who picked up where he left off or no? No, I, I don't, what he has done. Yeah. What Kwame Kuma did. What? Yeah. It, has there it been anybody who like build on to that? Do you feel like a leader? Yeah, there are, there are so many leaders. This president that come on from the Kufado to Johnny Banza Tamos, all the way, they all did something that helped build the Ghanaian nation. So it's not up to just Kwame Kuma who did something. Everybody that came on board actually brought something up to help build the Ghanaian. So, this is Kwame Kuma's third, 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 third,
Wait, his, was, but his actual, oh, they kept moving first, it. He was first buried in Guinea. In 1972, when he died in Romania, so he died in Romania. Mm -hmm. He had a, a sickness, so he was sent to Romania for treatment. But he actually have, uh, died over there. He couldn't get the treatment he wanted, so he died over there. So he was brought to Guinea for his first burial. The reason why he was sent there for his first burial was there was a coup d'état. Someone asked him, "What is a coup d'état?" A coup, a coup d'état is a military takeover. Mm -hmm. A military takeover. So. From 1966, Ghanaians were like, it's, it's enough, I've done enough. He you to look after us, you coming about, looking after our people, trying to bring Africa united and the rest. It's too much for us. Why don't you just focus on us? Mm -hmm. And they were still not getting replies, so they had to get with a good time. Mm -hmm. So when it happened like that, Kwame Kuma went ahead to live with his brother, not his brother's car, but his, his, his brother as in politics. Mm -hmm. The first brother, that is Sekuture. Sekuture is one the president of Guinea mm -hmm. as at that time. So Ture made him become the co-president of Guinea. Mm -hmm. So Kwame Kumar was the co-president of Guinea from 1966 to 1972, where I told you he moved to Romania for treatment. So he died in Romania. So he came to uh, Guinea to be, uh, he was first buried in Guinea. Then he then, went to Romania. No, then the mother asked for the body of his son. So the mother had to bring the body of Kwame Kumar to Ghana here. So he was buried in his hometown. Mm -hmm. His hometown. Yeah, that was the second place he was buried in Crawford. That happens to be the hometown's name. Mm -hmm. It's in the western region in Crawford. That's the hometown name. So this is the last place they buried Kwame Kumar. So when you come and look over there, you can see that that's the wife, Fatia. Ah, uh, yeah, Fatia. So Fatia was also buried. Besides the house. So he was buried in any home in, place in, in and Brooklyn. then back here. Yes. Okay, got it. Really? In the western region, they yes. came here. Oh, yes. wow. That's awesome. Yes. And so, what about the horns then? What do those like symbolize up uh, there? So, back then in the 60s, 70s, they didn't have the social media to communicate to the people about any information. So, the, like the horns actually represent a, it's a way of communicating to the people. So, they actually use the horn. There's drums and a guitar over there, so those things produce sounds. Mm -hmm. So when people hear sounds, they try to come, oh, what is happening here, what is happening here? So that's the way people got to know about some things happening here and the rest. So the horns is a way of communicating the mm -hmm. Wow. Look at Kwaba, that was good, thank you. Awesome. So what is the symbolism of like what's going on with Kwame Nkrumah's head being here and his body being over here? So somebody asked me why is Kwame Nkrumah's head over there with his left arm not in there, his fingers, right fingers are torn off. Hmm. Someone asked me why. So the reason is, I happen to tell you guys that there was a coup d'etat and military takeover in 1966. So when it happened, there was chaos in the country. There were people fighting all over. Those who agreed with what the army commanded, those who didn't agree, so they were fighting all over. They happened to spell the statue of Kwame Kuma. Mm -hmm. So they happened to spell the statue of Kwame Kuma. So Kwame Kuma head was somewhere, the arms, the body part that was gone missing was, was just scattered around. So one consensus was like, oh no, Kwame Kuma is actually a good person. He helped us gain our freedom. So why not me keep the head so that maybe in the near future when everything is calm down, I'll bring it to the public. But the woman was like, she doesn't want, uh, she wants to do an anonymous return. She doesn't want anyone to know mm -hmm. that she was actually the one who brought the, the head. So she brought it in 2009 an anonymous return. So this one was brought here in 2007. And the head was brought here in 2009. So Where that, was it brought from? This head was with the woman. She right. Said, in yes. Ghana though. Yeah, in Ghana. Oh, and the body. Okay, yes. gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. And then what's this place that they could visit? Like once they come here, what is um, this place this, uh, called? Audio and video channel. Right. So okay. So basically show some of the images and videos of Kwame Kuma. But hey guys, I want to keep you guys waiting. Come in. Come, <laughs> come get your tears and have a watch. Let's see. We can record? No, no okay. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> we had a good day, y'all. You can't see me, but we had a great day. 
Okay, y'all, we're heading out from the Kwame Nkrumah Museum now. It was excellent. Definitely have to bring y'all here. So definitely access about an Accra Day tour. It closes at seven. It wasn't much to get inside. We even were able to talk to one of the tour guides. He was super cool, super kind. But anyway, if you made it this far, you know I love you, you are family. It's kind of dark. Look at this. You are family, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay y'all, so I made it back to the house. Go we'll switch a of the cameras because I'm gonna sit and eat. And show y'all what I got from the grocery store. I didn't get much. This is not like a, a long stay. So I just got, I already got my bottles of water. So let's see. I just came from the grocery store. So I'm gonna show y'all what I got from ShopRite. Don't y'all be trying to judge me either because guess what? I'm young, go. <laughs> I'm young and dumb. But very quickly, let me just show y'all because I realized that some of y'all may be coming for the first time. So this is the only bottle of water that I really pretty much drink here. And I don't know, I just love, I think they did their thing with marketing with this red label. This is the only one I drink. It has the plastic cap on it. And so when I come to Ghana, whether I'm staying for seven days, three months, whatever the case, I buy me cases because I know like I'm miserable. I'm gonna be miserable if I don't have water. Like I don't drink soda and everything, but even if I did drink soda, I wanna make sure I'm having some water with this heat and everything going on. So this is the water I drink. I just got me two cases of these. I actually got them from a market for 20, I think it was like 22, 23 cities each. Now from ShopRite, I just picked me up some of these Smirnoffs from ShopRite. I think they're like 20, 23 cities or maybe less. I could be being dramatic, but I got me like four of those. That should be okay for the duration of my trip. I'm gonna put those in the refrigerator. And then I got me this bottle of wine. We're gonna be drinking it together at some point. It's a cute little balcony out there. So I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a live. Maybe I'll try to do a live on YouTube and Instagram and maybe Facebook. And I hate that I had to get these. Y'all know I love my Celsius drinks, but they don't have them here. So I got two of these just in case I need a little energy boost because we came here with a purpose, okay? So we can't be sleeping in. So I guess we can, but I do have some things I wanna get done before I go ahead and leave, so. That's really all I got from the grocery store. And then my grand plan this time that I'm here is not necessarily to cook because I don't, oh, he didn't take the meat. I was supposed to give Quabba to this chicken because I don't eat the chicken when he forgot it. But the grand plan is to buy things that I can like have as leftovers into the next day. So Papaye is the place. I just got fried rice and shito. And for those of you who don't know what shito is, let me just show you. And I paid for extra shito, so I pray. I pray that they gave me my extra shito. <gasps> they did? Oh! Okay, so I just almost had a heart attack because they usually put the sheet though in your bag or in your plate in these little containers and it's like black. So sheet though is this sauce. I don't know exactly what it's made of, but it's, I think it's Ghanaian. And it's really good, it's like spice and it adds extra flavor to your food. I love sheet though, gonna put me on. But I, they just started this new thing at Papaye where they put the sheet though in this packet, which is cool. And I thought they hadn't given me mine and I paid for two extra. So I think it's nice that they package it this way. I just hope that it tastes the same. And then they also give you, and I think this was like what, like 30, 40 cities for this meal. And they give you like some coleslaw and they give you a meat choice. They gave chicken, but I don't eat the chicken. So I was gonna give it to Kwabana, but he forgot it. So I'll just leave it in here. Maybe I'll give it to him tomorrow. But this is the fried rice. I'm gonna, oh, darn, I don't think I can warm it up. Maybe I can put it on one of these plates. Did they give me a fork? They gave me all this extra stuff. But I'll be right back because can you really not give me a fork? Let's see what this sheet bone looks like. Oh, it's the same thing. So if y'all can see that, it's like black. Can y'all see? You see it's like black Shido. I'll show you. It's black. Wow, let's see if it tastes the same though. I need to use the bathroom. I'm not gonna dive all the way in, but let's taste it. 
and it does need to be warmed up because uh -huh. the sheets on the pack is okay mm. it still adds a little extra flavor but it's not like super spicy hmm but anyway y'all let me just wrap us out today was excellent we got to experience the Kwame Nkrumah Museum the renovations are literally so freaking amazing we even got to interview one of the tour guides which was so awesome he was so open to do it he was a young guy and he was very knowledgeable about Kwame Nkrumah and the things they had going on in the museum during our tour at the Kwame Nkrumah Museum we actually got a tour deposit for another guest so that's super dope that was so fun Y'all should have saw me jumping for joy. But yeah, so that was just really good, y'all. It was just really good. I got to do everything except we were supposed to go to Independence Square. I wanted to get some stuff at Independence Square and talk to the guy who's usually up there taking pictures to, you know, just pick his brain about the site and like the history behind the site and all the things. But I'm gonna save that for another day. Like I told y'all before, I'm gonna go out tonight. So I'll get some of like what the nightlife is like here. Unless I'm having like way too much fun and I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I love y'all so much. I made it back home. I got my lashes done today. I freaking, you know, just went out and about and got heck of content. <laughs> I got to meet up with Quavana, so that was cool. And then I went grocery shopping, y'all. So that was my day two in Ghana. If you made it this far, you are family. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so you are the first to know when I drop my next video. Y'all know that on this channel, I believe that your voice matters. Your voice deserves to be heard even when they tell you it does not matter. Even when they tell you you don't belong in the room, I want you to walk in that room like God sent you. I want you to use this week to beef up. Use this week to take up space. Use this week to put, put your shoulders back and stop shrinking, right? Let your voice shine. Let your being shine. Let the light that's within you shine. I also like to say on this channel, feel the fear. But guess what you're going to do? You're going to do it anyway. And on that note, I love y'all and I will see you on the next one. Bye.